It is party time. Welcome to another episode of the Chad Prather Show. Wednesday, hump day. That's right. We're going to get humpty hump up in here. And don't forget Puppet Master Mark, as well as Super Chris Cruz and Let's Love Brandon, all at the helm driving the mothership into the nether regions of all things. Insanity Biscuit is full of energy today. We'll see how long she stays there. There's my wiener. The uh, I want to welcome to the show. I hate to inter- start that way and then bring it right over to this this man of elegance and class. Welcome back to the show, Chandler Crump. I'm glad you're here, buddy. So happy to be here. How it's you always, doing, man? It's always a fun time here with you, Chad. Every right. time. I mean, we've got this little wiener, as you called it, on set. <laughs> and honestly, I you know I can't say I've ever been on set with a wiener. Very yeah. you know out. You have. It's just never been pointed out. You know what? Yeah. I think you're right. Probably so. I think yeah. You're right. What have you been up to? I, it's been how long has it been since I've seen you? I mean, I've seen you, but since you were on the show, it's been, I guess, coming up on a year, maybe. Yeah, almost a year. There's been a lot that's happened between now and then last year. Yeah. And uh, well, I think one of the biggest things we could talk about uh, something that happened in October of last year, which is the hit song "Let's Go Brandon," which yeah. shattered the iTunes charts, shattered Billboard charts, uh, really sent a message. We beat Adele, and it was one of the biggest, you know, right wing cultural resets I think we've seen yeah. since. At least, I think the only major thing since has been, you know, the massive documentary in 2000 Mules that was really big as well, getting up in theaters. And so I think, you know, it really represented sort of a revolution and so much so that we we have a part in the culture as well. So that was a really big thing that I was happy to be a part of. Are you still, so Bryson Gray, obviously he released that. You were a part of that. You contributed to it. Um, and then I saw you at the uh, the little debate conference or whatever that we the thing we were at and we were talking about it because that was right there with kind of when that was happening. Yeah. And I saw Bryson the other day on on again I didn't see him personally but I saw him on social media holding up his you know his record there. <laughs> uh, I mean that thing was huge. Yeah. I and somebody I, you know we were talking the other day about Bryson we're talking to Bryson as well. I was like man how do you keep churning this stuff out? I mean he just walks into the next bedroom and just turns on the recorder I guess and starts turning this stuff out. Yeah. But I mean if you're gonna keep doing hit records i'd print them out as well so i'm glad you contributed to that but you're doing a ton of stuff you're traveling around yeah we're just actually coming back from california on the way you know being here we came back from california because we had an event out there where i actually got to perform and you know i'm still really young really new to this so i'm still really new to performing i think it's like my third or fourth real performance and it was like really eye-opening because this is something like if you told me like when i was 10 years old a few years ago and i know that makes a lot of people feel old right there 10 years old a few years ago i guess at this point (laughs) seven years ago but that i'd be you know a rapper performing music i'd tell you you know i like music and i love to sing but i don't think i'd ever be a rapper Rapper, but well do you think you kind of defy the stereotypes a little bit because people think rapper and they're gonna they have this certain yeah. image and you kind of got that clean cut I wholesome think, look and, <laughs> you know what i mean well, you're I, a good dude I, I am a little offended at that i, I don't like being called clean cut and you're wholesome, clean cut i don't but care I, li- I like the terms you know respectable <laughs> you know honorable you know one with integrity yeah um but yeah i think i even shattered these stereotypes for myself because the very first lyrics i rapped when i didn't i still didn't really consider myself a rapper or an artist was i'm not a rapper but i'll give it a try yeah. and that was when i did the maggot challenge with Bryson and that was um, way back in 2019 which was kind of like the whole beginning of this major cultural reset so I think shattering stereotypes is something that I'm really interested in because not only is it you know you know I don't you look at me oh he looks you know he doesn't look like a whole you know street thug or anything like that but it's also like you know I'm right wing so even if I even if I looked a little bit more street than this but I was still right wing they'd be like oh well you know he's he's a mark he's a nerd he doesn't really know anything about you know the, the streets he doesn't really know anything about artistry I think I shatter stereotypes on multiple, you know, multiple parallels because it's like we're going at it from so many different angles. You know, I break so many stereotypes. It's like, wow, you know, he's black, but he's a conservative. He's black, but he's, you know, he supported Trump and uh, things of that nature. It really yeah. shatters a lot of those stereotypes that people set. And the more they look at it, you know, at first they'll get triggered. They'll be like, oh, look at this. You know, he's and then they insert here racial term here. Um, but then past that, they're like, but, you know, he's thinking for himself. You know, they hear me talking. They're like, well, hey, he sounds like he, you know, trusts what he's talking about. He sounds like he knows what he's talking about. Let me listen that's how you do it that's how you break the mold right yeah I, listen that, I, that that's why i continue wearing a cowboy hat I, <laughs> lo- I love for people to underestimate and they go ahead and judge before they ever get past the cover of the book you know what i'm saying yeah um and i still don't consider myself a comedian i've been doing comedy for years i still don't of course a lot of people who have seen my show would say i'm not a comedian too but well, that's I, story. Can, I can tell you and i'm as much as elijah schaefer would hate to hear this i'd say your show is probably the funniest show here on Blaze. there's no question about it yeah. i mean elijah elijah's trying I, yeah. I am what i'm what elijah will be maybe when he grows up yeah okay? <laughs> we'll see we'll see how that turns out uh love that dude too um when we can tolerate him i'm kidding <laughs> the uh, 
you but you uh you've been going out there how does it do you like being on stage would you rather be behind the microphone or in front of people so i'd say you know my mom said something to me a couple months ago and she said chandler you might be one of the weirdest people i know because you have no fear yeah and like you know it might be something like i was you know under bacon in the head but standing <laughs> let's let's give you a little bit of history november of 2020 right after the after the election there was a big event in washington dc called the million mega march the march for trump had a few different names yeah. but it was a bunch of trump supporters conservatives and patriots gathering in dc because they believed something was happening and so they were all there together um and i was one of the speakers that was invited to speak on stage and i could tell you it was one of the most massive crowds I had ever seen in my life, period. Not just for an event, um, but for a, you know, not, you know, not just for a political event, but for anything. And I got up on that stage and I felt no fear. Yeah. I felt, you know, I felt like I had a mission. I had something to accomplish. I had something to prove. And so I've never felt fear when it comes to that. So even when I'm performing music and, you know, it's a lot harder to perform music than to give a speech, even though people are hanging on your word yeah. a lot more with a speech than, you know, with music. Um, but I've never felt fear because I know I'm going after a purpose. I'm going after to, you know, save my race, save my country, save whatever I believe in, whatever I'm going after at that point. And I feel so determined. What kind of like what's the attitude of the, you got the dog on you now? Yeah. What what is the attitude of the crowds of your audiences when oh, they're there? Man. Are they it's, are they you know it, it, all these you know people? You know I say people, but I mostly mean liberals are always like, oh, these Trump supporters are so racist. And I've people had people in my comments be like, oh, you know, if you ever you ever met any of these people, you'd know just how they truly feel about you. Yeah. Yes, I know how they truly feel about me. Yeah. They are so very proud. We were talking about it a few minutes ago, but you wouldn't believe how many moms I've met at these events that are like, please, please marry my daughter. Yeah. Please, please join our bloodline and give us something to be proud of. Stop biting me. I know, don't, don't bite it. Look at the dog. No, but anyways, you know, these people are so respectful, so kind. They, they give me so much love. And it's like, how could you ever call, you know, a, a Trump supporter, one of these MAGA people racist yeah. when they've been the exact opposite to me? They've been so respectful, so kind, and they've been supporting me all along the way. You know, on my live streams, I have so many people that tune in, watch there in the comments, and they even donate to support the show. And it's like, how could you ever say anything as as disrespectful and as rude about a person to call them a racist or a white supremacist or anything like that when they've been nothing but supportive of myself and others like me that, you know, may or may not be, quote unquote, people of color or may or may not be minorities, but they respect them nonetheless. Yeah. And you're good, too, because nothing gets to you. I mean, you got a dog chewing on you and you're giving a great interview. It's fantastic. <laughs> I mean, listen, you talk about Chad, ice water Chad, in you really, veins. You really need to control your wiener, Chad. <laughs> I got five kids. It's, I promise you, that's been a problem. It's oh been a problem. Uh, we're going to carry the euphemism to its uh, desired conclusion there. Uh, you can smack her if you need to. We, we, we'll abuse the dog right here on the show. It worked. It works, I'm telling you. It worked. You. <laughs> I know. Come here, Biscuit. Come here, girl. Get out of here. She, uh, but no, we, uh, she loves you. The, um, the cool thing, though, is, well, I say the cool thing is it, it's great that you get the attention and you're able to see that because a lot of people, they step into these things with assumptions. I, the biggest hate that I see comes from the progressive left. Oh, gosh. The messages that come in. I'm sure you get tons of oh, man. racial epithets <laughs> and name-calling yeah. and things like that that come from them far more than you have ever experienced from anybody on the conservative Never. right. I mean, there's crazy people on both oh, sides. Oh, yeah, there's definitely I is. Yeah, I've, I've heard some of the craziest things, but I've heard even crazier things from the left. Like, you know, it's funny, Ryan Long, and I'm sure you know he's a, this, yeah. a great comedian, almost as funny as you, almost. Almost. Um, but he did this amazing skit where it was like the woke left versus like some actual Ku Klux Klan racist. And he was talking about like, I want black and white people to operate and occupy separate facilities. And the racist is like, well, I completely agree. And I think that really hammers the, the point in so well yeah. is that these people have become, and I rap about it in one of my new songs called Not Woke. Um, they're so progressive that they're actually becoming regressive. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, progressive is the exact opposite of what they are. Like a few years ago, you could say, oh yeah, well, they're fighting for equality within the races. Okay, that's cool. And then they started fighting for equality within LGBT. And, you know, it's, it's further, but it's still cool. Yeah. But now they're literally fighting for segregation. Like on college campuses, there's a video out a few years ago where it was this lady who was like, this is a black only space. Right. Any white people need to leave right now. And I'm like, do you know how disappointing such a statement is? Do you know how 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 disappointed Martin Luther King or all these different people that you spend all this time, you know, championing in college saying like these are the heroes of our time or heroes of past times and it's like, well, yeah, it's true, but you're you're fighting the exact opposite of their message. They've become so anti-racist, quote unquote, and that term is so stupid that it literally is racist now. Yeah. Well, I've always said that any 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 movement of a group of people i don't care what label you put on them they're not after equality they're after control right biscuit quit 
<laughs> Quit. Quit chewing on the black man. What's going on, Biscuit? Uh-oh. I know, right? Dogs. She loves you. She's a loving dog. I'm telling you, man. Everybody's got to get everybody's got to get one of those dogs. Yeah. Biscuit's awesome. So uh, where can people find everything that you're doing? Uh, so you can find all of my stuff available on ChandlerCrump.com. I'm available on all social medias like Twitter, Truth Social, Gitter. You can just look me up on those last two at Chandler. And then on Twitter, I'm at Real C, C-R-U-M-P. Uh, Twitter obviously does a lot of hiding and stuff, so you have to really look, but yeah. you should be able to see me and find me. I'm also available on all uh, video platforms as well. I do my live shows every week on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Eastern. So you can find me on YouTube. Just look up Chandler Crump. I'm also on Rumble at Chandler Crump, so you can find me there. Cool. We're going to go to a break. I'm not done with you. We're going to talk about some more things. We're going to get deep into it today. Hey, you know what's in uh, that wine bottle that's uh, sitting on your kitchen counter? You probably don't because tr traditional media and advertising won't tell you this. Oak flavoring, mega purple dye, tons of sugar. Uh, that's not counting all the chemicals left over from the vineyards that uh, look more like oil refineries than great chateaus of historic <laughs> old but better wines do exist they don't cost an arm and a leg take it from america's top wine explorer recently he came across a wine unlike anything he's ever tasted problem is this delicious red wine can only be found in a single isolated corridor known as the world's most remote wine valley he almost died twice trying to find these vineyards uh this is a special wine that he went up there and got so uh, i want you to give him a try over at bonner private wines uh we're going to give it to you at half the retail price you don't need a promo code uh plus they'll give you 50 percent off the shipping it's something special folks i love this stuff it's a very good malbec it's even healthy to drink visit bonnerprivatewines.com slash chad to claim your wine that's bonner privatewines.com slash chad and we'll be right back all right welcome back to the program obviously if you're looking at the couch you see chandler crump isn't sitting there anymore we're going to bring him back but right now my buddy kyle rittenhouse is sitting here how you doing man i'm doing good chad this is actually my first time on your show i'm, first time. I'm glad to be here thank you for having me chad yeah, dude i'm glad you're here i've been looking forward to seeing you and uh, i keep get, i keep telling everybody I was like everybody's had kyle on their show but i haven't had a chance but i'm glad you're here man i'm Th glad you're thank here. thank you so much for uh having me here are you tired of having cameras shoved in your face <laughs> honest, honest question. You can you can say anything you want to say on here. We, everybody knows your story. We don't have to talk about all that nonsense. Mm -hmm. I won't talk about you. Are you are you are you tired of any of this stuff? Well, um, I was I tried to be quiet at first, but that didn't work. But now I'm out here. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna continue to be here, and yeah. I'm gonna rebuild my image back. So I'm not gonna be quiet. I'm gonna be loud. You know what? Here's the deal. So we we were in the we were in the the makeup room in there a little while ago, right? And uh, yeah, we do that. And I took a picture of you and Chandler and Biscuit, y'all over my shoulder. I put it on Facebook and I put it on my personal page. Just got about 1,200 reactions to it um, right now. And I get great picture. Kyle, rock star patriot. How cool. Great combo. Um, uh, looking happy and healthy. Kyle's looking great. Kyle's in the house um on and on this stuff goes this is so cool it they just keep rocking just you catch a lot of hate is my point mm -hmm. but there's a lot of people that love and support you oh absolutely and that just let me just take a moment to say thank you for all the support and all yeah. the prayers and all the donations i'm truly thankful because without my support base i don't know where i'd be so i'm so thankful for all of them yeah and you're <clears throat> you know you live we live in a microscope world where everything you say is scrutinized especially a guy like you right um they're they're going to try to anything you say they're going to try to use against you they're going to twist it and stuff and i love the fact that you've continued to be outspoken you've been on the shows you've been out there you were just at uh at turning points um young women's leadership summit, summit. yeah uh, here in dallas so you, you're still getting out there and you know the journey is like you said you're fighting back which I'm proud of. I'm glad you're doing that. And I hope you take them to the cleaners, honestly. Absolutely. And we actually just hired Todd McNurtry um, to help with all these cases that's going on and to help TMAP, the Media Accountability Project, tmap.org, if you want to come support us. So we have that going on. So it's yeah. awesome. 
And I know that it's a it's it's a bad deal, right? It's a bad deal that everybody kind of wants to lump your name in anytime something like the Uvalde shooting happened or what happened in Buffalo. And, and so suddenly every everything gets tied all back together. That's unfair. I don't like that stuff. Um, but I do. I have a clip I want to play later on, and I want to get your reaction to it of something that happened at the White House yesterday. But um, you you are are you nineteen? Yes, you're nineteen years old. You are a solid young man. I mean, and again, I don't say the young in a condescending way. I just, I'm a little bit jealous of it, actually. But I love how you've held your head up. You've gone out there, and you have been a rock star through this whole thing. And uh, I'm sorry that you have to put up with certain people like Elijah Schaefer and, and guys like that. And uh, But uh, you got a future ahead of you, man, and it's going to be huge. So I'm proud of that. Absolutely. So many people want to see me fail, but that is not going to happen. It's good to hear. My story's just beginning, and it's going to be an awesome, amazing story. Yeah. So you've kind of had a little bit of the runaround when it comes to picking schools to go to. And you, you do want to go to college. Yes. And it looks like you're coming to Texas. Yes, I am. So uh, I went to uh, College Station. I toured Texas a and I absolutely fell in love with it. And I decided that's where I want to go. I want to get that Aggie ring. So I sat nice. down with an academic advisor from a and m and we came up with an education plan. And part of that education plan involves me going to Blinn. And when I receive um, the academics required to go to A&M, which I will, yeah. I'll meet that requirement. I'm going to go to Texas A&M next year. And I'm going to get it. that Aggie ring. And Blinn's a good school. I mean, it's a good feeder right into A&M. So that's a good deal mm -hmm. to get everything you need. It's part of Texas A&M. Yeah, yeah. And so that's uh, that's going to be great, man. I'm going to come to College Station and party with you. I don't oh, care what absolutely. anybody says. I'll be the old creepy guy that's over there, you know. Hey, I got a house down there. I signed the lease. <laughs> we can go throw some parties at my house, Chad. So you've already done it. Larry. You, you, you've got, you put ink on the paper. You're... Ink is on the paper. I am going to College Station. I will be living there. We shared a Blaze article about that. And there were a lot of the comments on my page when I shared it over there where people were saying, oh, he said he was going to do this, he was going to do that. We don't know what to trust anymore. I'm like, he's a kid going to college. He's not, I mean, how many, we all go through that, mm -hmm. right? And what people need to remember is while every other 19-year-old were, were applying to colleges, I was on trial you fighting were on trial. for my life. So I didn't have that opportunity yeah. to apply when I was fighting for my life. Yeah. <laughs> How how are you recovering from that? I mean, that's that's, I mean, psychologically and mentally, you went through a ton. I know that, so um, I know it without knowing it from personal experience. But just everybody that watched the trial, they, I mean, nobody should have to go through what you went through, right? And again, and and I say that because in most cases you were you were guilty until proven innocent, right? Exactly, like Malcolm X said, yeah. the media has the power to make the guilty innocent and the innocent guilty yeah if you i mean and you've had you've had the thing you you know you publicized the statement you made about lebron james and, the, and there's various celebrities that are out there stuff and it, like i i always say I, you know i don't really care about the celebrity opinions of course then people come at me and say well you're sort of a celebrity and you have an opinion yeah but that's what i do right I, i'm i'm well known because of my opinions right but these guys I don't really care what any of them think. And and again, you were thrust into a situation where you did what you did. And thank God that the institutions of the United States that we cherish in that process found you not guilty. And I'm thankful for that. Um, and I, I stand with you now. I stood with you then wholeheartedly, was praying for you and pulling for you. Um, because, because you were thrust into some, into some rough stuff. So man, you're doing good. And I appreciate the fact that, your brain's doing great. You're mentally tough. You know what I mean? Absolutely. You got to stay strong and you got to know that God's always watching out for you. Yeah. And that he always will be there for you. Yeah. He may not be at that party at A&M we're going to throw, but whatever. <laughs> we'll see. We'll invite him. Um, I want to play this clip to you. So Matthew McConaughey, uh, who again has made a lot of money using guns uh, in his movies, uh, had this to say yesterday at the White House because, of course, he... He's from originally from Uvalde, Texas, and which was the place of the school shooting at Robb Elementary School. Can we play that clip real quick? My day wore green high top converse with a heart she had hand drawn on the right toe because they represented her love of nature. Camilla's got these shoes. Can you show these shoes, please? Wore these every day. 
green converse with a heart on the right toe. These are the same green converse on her feet that turned out to be the only clear evidence that could identify her after the shooting. How about that shit? Maybe they wrote a letter. Now, obviously, Matthew is getting pretty passionate about this thing. Kyle, I don't know if you've ever been involved in a shooting or not, but um, it, it's it's kind of a messy affair. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah. I mean, it's it's not a it's not. Those look like pretty clean shoes. Now, again, uh, NPR came out this week and said that an AR-15 will liquefy internal organs. Uh, they, I mean, that's they don't. It can't. I mean, this is not Men in Black here. Uh, a two two three or a five five six can't liquefy organs, and they talk about the the gruesome, bloody mess. And again, I'm not taking anything away from the tragedy or the shoes or whatever. But here's the issue I have. Put up that one screenshot we've got. Here is Matthew McConaughey and his wife Camilla sitting there. Uh, I'm assuming in the White House. Can you zoom in on the shoes she's wearing? Green, high top. Why is she wearing what appears to be that little girl's shoes? Yeah. Is this theater? I mean, you got any thoughts on that at all? I mean, this is crazy. Well, I, I don't know much about it. I've been uh, I've been really busy the past yeah. couple of weeks, so I haven't focused much on that. Um, right. One thing that does make me really upset about the Uvalde shooting is a father was a supporter of mine, and they went out to attack him for supporting me. Really? That's that's a sad deal. That's a sad deal. I I just when they when they start bringing in and and blowing this thing up in such a way that I that you look at it you go I don't know if I'm believing this story you're telling. You're trying to pull on people's heartstrings and it does. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I know what they're after in doing that by by going after people's emotions. And trying to get them riled up they did it with you you know they tried to get people all fired up the media did everything they could to vilify you make you the bad guy in the situation and so uh when i see stuff like that i'm like you're, you're taken away from the real issue that's going on here um let's let's let justice be served let's get to the bottom of it let's get to the truth let's let's deal with things in an honest fashion i just feel like that's a dishonest thing on the part of the white house hang around for a minute we're going to do something in the next segment. Don't go anywhere. All right. I'm going to keep you for about 10 more minutes. All right. Um, and uh, don't run off real quick. There's Chris. What do you got? You got that thing working? You let, yeah. you let me drive? All right. Good. Let's sell something. In Joe Biden's America, criminals are exalted. The police are condemned. It's sad to say, but you need to be prepared and properly trained to defend yourself and your family. Thankfully, there's iTarget Pro. This revolutionary system allows you to dry fire practice with your actual firearm anytime in the safety and privacy of your own home. No more inconvenient trips to the range. And with inflation causing the price of ammunition to skyrocket, it's going to save you a ton. Just download iTarget's proprietary app, load the laser bullet into your firearm, and start your training experience. iTarget's going to help you develop muscle memory, sharpen target reaction, speed, sight alignment, trigger function, a whole lot more. iTarget Pro is going to come in all the major calibers, including 223, so you stay sharp with almost any firearm you own. Go to iTarget Pro right now and save 10%, plus get free shipping with the offer code CHAD. Uh, it's going to make a great gift for Father's Day. It's less expensive than just a few hours at the range. That's the letter I, targetpro.com. Use offer code CHAD, and we'll be right back. Hey guys, you know it's that part of the show where I like to wax eloquent for a minute, and uh, you know it behooves us as a worshipful society that flings itself madly into the arms of whatever notion seizes its feelies in the moment to occasionally pop the lens covers off the binoculars and take a close look at the sheer ridiculousness of all that we do. Let us take a, a brief little trip into the insane continent of Europe, landing our plane in Austria for a little while to sample the local cuisine. And hey, you're never going to believe this. Not only do they have Burger King over there, but their Burger King is, a, is at least as dumb as our Burger King in that it makes a big deal out of Pride Month. In fact, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like for you to join me in a chorus of praise and flattery for Burger King Austria because they've made the bold choice of introducing for Pride Month a special type of Whopper. <laughs> so many jokes. Yes, this Whopper will have, brace yourselves folks, either two top buns or two bottom buns. Your choice. 
Hand to God, shit you not. That's their pride statement. Now, for those of you who might be geographically challenged, allow me to elucidate for you the most important points you need to know. Austria is a German-speaking country with German-speaking people who typically eat German-speaking food. And you're telling me that in the land of sausages... That wasn't gay enough for you? Look, I've seen a lot of crazy things in my life, folks. This is one of the crazier ones. And here's the real kick in the lederhosen. It's not popular. In fact, people are getting offended and tweeting about it, which is at least par for the course. But I say, what in the world are you getting offended for, folks? Look, isn't this just a natural outgrowth of the kind of silliness that we've bathed ourselves in for years at this point? Can you honestly tell me that in a few years that every school child, you know, is singing cis white buns instead of hot cross buns? You're going to be surprised and bothered. No, folks, we checked our sanity in at the door and the odds of reclaiming it at this point are slim to none. Now, personally, I hope they keep this system. I hope they do. Hell, I hope it spreads to every Burger King in every country in the whole world. It'll make it so much easier to classify people by what they're eating in the restaurant. I mean, Chris, let's face it. If you're in there eating a regular Whopper, you're clearly a heteronormative white person and almost certainly the part of the problem that we're fighting. Whopper with either both top buns or both bottom buns, you're clearly a gay man or a lesbian woman, and we celebrate you all the months of the year, not just in June. And the impossible Whopper... Well, that's clearly for transgendered people because, you know, biology. Whatever ends up happening, the real truth is I don't care. I really don't care. I love to talk about it, but I don't care. Businesses like Burger, Burger King are throwing their lot in with the LGBTQ plus folks, not because they really have a dog in the fight, but because if you're a major international corporation, it's kind of the thing to do to preserve social capital with the insanely loud minority. We've seen it with Disney. We've seen it with Nike. We've seen it with tons of big companies over the years, and it makes sense if you're betting your money that the wokesters of the world are going to be the winners in the end, they're hedging their bets, and I get it. Of course, you're going to have a pretty major awakening if and when the chips fall in the direction opposite that upon which you've been counting. I mean, you've been warned, Burger King. Hope it's worth it for you. We'll see what happens. Oh, my gosh. See if we can control this thing, Chris. It doesn't want to stop for me. And I got stuff to sell later on in the episode. Welcome back to the couch, Chandler Crump. Chandler, do you know you're sitting by a white supremacist? How dare us? I can just feel it emanating from him, Chad. How could you How could you put me in such a terrible position? To be so next much to... hate in the room, I can't stand it. Yeah, I know. See, this, this, this destroys the narrative, right? And when I came into the building today, uh, Kyle and you, y'all were sitting down there on the couch, chatting, hanging out. We came walking in. It's just couple dudes hanging out right boy the media hates that they do not want that getting out right that kind of narrative going so anyway you saw the clip chandler of the the shoes there Ugh. whose shoes were those that matthew mcconaughey was pounding the desk over it was not that little girl's shoes yeah it was the most disgusting thing we could talk about um because it's it's yet another hollywood star taking advantage of a terrible situation to not only fight for their politically expedient goal uh using political expediency to achieve that goal which is gun control you know infringement on the second amendment as we saw him back in 2018 in the march for our lives uh, march for our lives saying we need to be banning all these guns for you know these assault weapons for any use and even recreational use you need to put your guns down which is just insane enough he said back in 2018 but now he's profiting off of this shooting that happened, this terrible tragedy, so that he can grandstand for whatever he believes in, but then also boost his own ego, boost his own uh, career, because now, right now on Twitter, he's number one trending, Matthew McConaughey, everybody wants to talk about it, and it's even great for his wife, who isn't nearly as out there as he is, he's utilizing yeah. her, you know, female stature, matching with the gender of the little girl, to profit off of it. Meanwhile, the shoes don't even belong to the little girl, because they are, as somebody here on the show so aptly said, are evidence the right. shoes are and after the years of the girl wearing them they aren't even like a dark dark deep green anymore they're more of like a mint color uh you can look up the image and see it yourself but the the shoes that they have are just some shoes the wife owns that yeah. they went in and drew the little heart on the right toe just to match it I think that's some one of the most despicable things because they're utilizing their arts their gifts as 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 actors and you know people that have access to the arts to be able to draw something and match it like that for such an evil purpose as to I'd say honestly pander after the shooting, pander for yeah. what they believe in and you know, sacrifice the lives that were lost and the, the lives that were ruined by this, this terrible tragedy yeah. for their own goal. Yep, good analysis, good commentary. Kyle, do you even care about politics? Not really. Yeah. Um, I see what's happening in the world right now with Joe Biden as president, him using, like trying to push this gun control narrative, trying to take away guns and yeah. 
God, do I hate paying one hundred and five dollars for gas? Yeah, <laughs> we got it. We got to share yeah, the shirt. Gotta, it's like, where can people get this shirt, Chandler? Yeah, by the so way. you can get this shirt on ChandlerCrump.com, and then you just hit the merchandise store. Uh, it's supposed to be a fake thing about gas prices, and it even has the little Joe Biden, I did that sticker. On the other versions, you can actually see Biden. On the white version, uh, it just looks looks like this. But the gas prices are supposed to be fake, you know, $9 for regular. But in some places, like California, we're getting pretty dang close, which yeah, is just dude, unbelievable. That, what are you going to say, Kyle? Here in Texas, it's getting up there, too. It is, yeah. dude. I, look, I drive, I drive a Ford F-250. It's It's... Uh, I stop at $150, Yes, right? It's at least $150 yeah. to put. And I have to put the diesel exhaust fluid in there as well, the DEF. There's a shortage of DEF going on right now. I mean, that you you know, that's like every 2,000 miles I have to put DEF in the truck. So, you know, that's tw another 25 bucks. Yeah, a, you know, a it's, it's a point. For it. Yeah, it's a point. I made on my show yesterday um, that you can really, if Biden, so what they did yet, yeah, what they did is they put out a survey from the uh, Fed and they were like, are you happy with your financial situation? Because at the press briefing yesterday uh, with Karine Jean-Pierre, uh, Peter Ducey and others were like, listen, the, the economy is so bad. Do you have anything for us? And the, the girl had the gall, and the girl I'm talking about, Jean-Pierre, the new yeah. press secretary who is honestly really giving Jen Psaki a run for her money, was like, well, <laughs> actually, Americans are happy with their personal financial situation. Right. So it's clear the Biden administration does not want to look outside of their ivory tower to understand what's going on. Yeah. And they simply are just standing in the middle of their castle with no clothes on and uh, surrounded by mirrors yet not even looking at themselves to see that they are naked. That's a really deep analogy right there. I, I like the way you put that. But if they want to actually, you know, go outside, walk outside and let people point and laugh at them and tell them you're naked, you need to go to these gas stations. And once you get past seeing the little I did that sticker, uh, look at the look at the gas meters. Now, you can look at the insane prices. But what I noticed is what's happening is that instead of letting their tank fill all the way up when they fill up gas, what they're doing is they're just putting 20, 30, 40 dollars in and then getting as much gas as they can for $40. And so you yeah. arrive at a gas station, you'll see your previous pump person who was pumping there didn't let it go all the way up to like $80, which it would have gone to like a year ago to fill up their tank if they had a big truck or even like a moderately sized car. But now they're just letting it get to $50 because, well, dang, that's all I can afford this week for gas. We just yeah. got to let it go. People are hurting. People yeah. are hurting. In fact, we got a clip. There was an interview. Uh, there's a man at a gas station. Um, and this was an MSNBC reporter. They didn't like the way this interview went. Can you play it, Mark? What do you think Americans are thinking right now as they see these prices climb and climb? Do you feel like there's a sense that there's someone to blame out there? If you had to blame anyone, could you? I don't like to get political, but I would say, you know, <laughs> it starts from the top, president. Would that change how you're considering voting for the next election, whether it's congressional later this year or presidential a couple of years down the road? Definitely, definitely. I just know that <laughs> one administration had cheaper gas <gasps> and this administration has more expensive gas. And this is a bottom line, strictly financial conclusion for you. I mean, it's a housing market. It's everything you previously mentioned. It's, I mean, gas is a big part of it. But I mean, right now we're house hunting and that seems impossible. See, that's real life right there. And he's holding a four-year-old, so fortunately he doesn't have to go find baby formula for her. She's old enough. Hopefully that'd not. be a whole other problem he'd be yeah. dealing with, mm -hmm. right? You know, shortage, the price is crazy. Yeah. I, I think I think everybody's going to be opening their eyes, especially as the midterms come this year. We see people that had never voted Republican before. I know plenty of them that voted Republican for Trump in 2020 or didn't vote that are now in 2022. Like, listen, enough is enough. I've told myself, as the guy said in the interview, I don't like to get political. I've told myself, you know, I'd never support somebody who is, you know, is racist, sexist, or something like that. But they're seeing how their bottom lines are suffering. They're seeing how their children are getting hungry and hungry because instead of feeding them whenever they're hungry, they have to ration the baby formula. And they're seeing how they're struggling to get to and from work because gas is so high that now they're willing to do whatever it takes, including betraying what they previously thought were their morals in order to secure a better life for themselves and yeah. their families. And like that man right there is standing for his future. Yeah, we know how the media has twisted things, whether it's Trump or whatever. I mean, Kyle saw it firsthand. Yeah. Don't you love the media, Kyle? So the media pretty much used me as their scapegoat, and I actually learned how bad the media was with me, but they've been doing this for years. Yeah, yeah. It's a mind-controlling thing. Uh, we're going to run to a break real quick. Hey, in these politically charged times, conservatives need to vote with their dollars. I love the folks over at Minutemen Coffee. They are the coffee for American patriots. Constitutionally-based, family-owned company, steadfast in their belief that all freedom-loving Americans deserve products from companies that share their beliefs without fear of cancellation or retaliation from the woke mob. 
Minutemen Coffee believes in your constitutional rights. They put their money where their mouth is, sending you a copy of the Constitution in every order so you can bring this important conversation right home to the coffee table. Educate the next generation of constitutional patriots. Amazing coffee. It's small batch, handcrafted from family farms across the globe, roasted to perfection, delivered fresh to you. I've tasted a lot of different coffees in my life, but Minutemen Coffee, I think it's possibly the best. I've ever had great aroma great taste you're gonna love it as much as i do plus with minutemen coffee you're gonna get a full pound of coffee for less than what most companies are gonna charge for just a cup minutemen coffee has a special going on right now if you buy three bags of their heritage roast you add trader joe to your cart it's gonna be free as well as free shipping check them out if you don't want that i'll get you 15 percent off if you use offer code chad i spell it chad join the coffee revolution and help us spread the constitution wake up without going woke and we'll be right back So, Kyle, are you still are you still raising support? I mean, obviously, you got legal. You're gonna have legal bills to pay for. And Absolutely. Be, yeah. So, um, at tmap.org, you can join our fight to make the media pay for what they did. We're going after a couple people right now, and it's gonna cost a lot of money. Spell that website. T T M A P dot org. Okay. Dot org. T map dot org. Help him out and uh, and contribute where you can. Facebook. Is that on his Facebook? Are you on Facebook? So we're actually going after Facebook. You're going, going, oh, you're going on. I sued Facebook back in February and won. First time in Texas anybody sued Facebook and won. Really? Yeah, so I made history. The media doesn't want to talk about that. Mm -hmm. And that's a historical thing, so go get them. Yep, we're going after Mark Zuckerberg. He called me a murderer, and that's defamatory. We're going after Facebook because they hid comments for support and people telling the truth about me. And we believe that under Section 230 of the Communication Decency Act that that they can't do that. I hope you get more money than Nick Sandman. I do. I want you to have a billion. I want you to have a billion dollars. So uh, funny story. Uh, Nick Sandman's attorney, Todd McMurtry, is yeah. actually my attorney too. That's awesome, dude. And when I read that, when I saw that, then of course you brought it up a minute ago. I, I was like, go get him. I mean, obviously he knows the route to win. You know. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, I think you got. I think you got an open and shut case in this whole thing. Absolutely. So. And then, and then, you know, what give me a little did. bit of money, and I won't have to come into the studio anymore. Yeah. Chandler, we'll we'll all hang out. He can have his own studio at home, there just record stuff. You could be our sugar daddy, <laughs> <laughs> uh. Kyle. Dude, that's a T-shirt. Yeah. Kyle Rittenhouse is my sugar daddy. Yes. As soon as he wins, we got to put that sucker out. I'm then we can afford gas. <laughs> maybe, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. These, these prices. I don't might know if there's double. enough money in the world on that <laughs> deal, though. These but, prices, I'm going to have to, like, can you help me with gas, Chad? Exactly, right? I'll, I'll float you alone for now, Cal. Oh. All right, just remember, you're my sugar daddy. Um, hey, you should see the price of gas. I got a gas. daughter. I got a daughter. I got three daughters, actually. I'll introduce you. I, I kept saying, you know, look, my three daughters, if I could marry them off to Sandman and you, we'd be set. We'd be when set. When I don't get a daughter, Chad? Dude, you ain't got money like, <laughs> you ain't got money like Rittenhouse yet. Crump, let me tell you something. You got a number one record, mm -hmm. but I need you to get that money. <laughs> I'll work on it. I would be honored to call you my son-in-law, Chandler Crump. Yeah, they, they may have the money, but I got the bars, so that's the, hey, that's you, the most You got that, thing. baby. That's true. You know what? I'm proud of both of you guys. I am. Y'all are working hard. You got, I mean, it gives me so much hope in the next generation. It really does. Um, and Chandler, you and I have talked about it before, man. You're just out there killing it, and I love the hustle. I love the hustle. I mean, you just drove from Georgia to California. Yes. You and your dad. Yeah. And you guys, I mean, y'all just crisscrossed the country getting work done. Yeah, it's all important for the mission. I think, you know, fighting for the next generation, fighting for even right now. I mean, I, I know so many people that like I was just even just in my stream yesterday, somebody was telling me that, that I inspired them to not only get involved in politics, but to even get involved and start making music because they believed in it. I've inspired so many people and that's inspiring to me. You know, it's a, it's a loop yeah. of inspiration because the more people I inspire to get started and fight, that the more closer we're gonna get to achieving our goal, achieving our mission, which is saving this country. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited for you guys, and, uh, you know, I just – anything I can ever do to, to support, push, and promote, I'm going to do it for you guys. And uh, and uh, it, the thing is, we've been, we've been having – so you guys have been here. We've been we've had uh, Lily Kate on recently. Morgan Zegers has been on recently. Um, who else do we have? We had um, Chris. Cooper. 
we, uh, we had uh, Brett Cooper, yeah, with Daily Wire. She came on. Just I could just list them off. I love this next generation of leaders and patriots and folks that just have their heads screwed on straight. And I love talking to you guys. It's encouraging to me because again, I got five kids and twenty five and down, and and I'm I'm proud to know that they're not alone of having people with the values. One of the things that Chris likes to do in this segment is show me a TikTok that I've never seen. <laughs> You're on TikTok. Uh, not right now. Not right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got you. I understand. Hey, uh, can you play it? We got one? Yeah. Let's do it. Happy Pride, everybody. I already mentioned go. this in my story, but um, I've added a new set of pronouns to the pronouns that I'm comfortable being called. <laughs> comfortable. I've been sitting on Faye Fair Fair's pronouns for a while, and honestly, kind of psyching myself out about it. I'm like, oh, do I really want to like change this again? And then I like realized, I was like, who cares? Like, if I decide that I don't like them, I can just stop using them. My other thing about this new set of pronouns is that I would only like for queer and trans people to use them for me. Cishet people, they, them. Queer and or trans people, you can use they, them, or fey, fair. It's all good with me. I'm excited because fey, fair pronouns <laughs> make me feel very affirmed in my not feeling like a person. So, uh, Chad, I have a question for you. Yeah. What are your pronouns? Because I forgot to ask when I walk in. I am sorry if I well, offended I mean, your feelings. I would, you know what? And, and because you are who you are, I let it go. Uh... <laughs> I I identify as the she it okay the she it yeah <laughs> yes the she it that that's pretty much it yeah um, a lot of people push back and they say the is not a pronoun but to me it is and oh. I may come up with a new set yeah. later Pro on pronoun, you've ever pronouns are in the set. eyes of the Chandler? beholder you know pronouns are in the eyes of the beholder <laughs> well unless you're, gen you're you're transgender queer and then you can have a whole other set of you <laughs> you're allowed to use other pronouns for other people. Oh no, right. yeah, you, you gain access. It's like it's like upgrading your subscription. You go in from like premium to like you know plus gas, you know, or I guess plus the premium gas. You gain access to a whole new. It's like set a secret handshake. Yeah. No. Oh, yeah. It's the soul. Oh, the whole handshake. Like, how does she know? She. Or what? She. Vive. Vive. They, they, theirs. I don't. I don't know what she was. Did you saying. just assume her gender? No, chat? I, did. I don't know he what just, else to do. You know, he, he just, just referred to her by the incorrect gender. pronouns. Look, we're, I'm we're a white heterosexual. Right here. I'm a white heterosexual cowboy that drives a diesel truck so i can call her whatever i want because i'm toxic so yeah. I, I should be allowed to do that right yeah i'm mansplaining this whole thing that i don't understand uh while i manspread as well how does she know what another person identifies as in order to use I, it gets confusing there's so many subcategories at this point yeah the the mental delusion goes so crazy and so deep that there's no way to really escape from it one of the songs on my album is called two genders and at the beginning of this song i actually sampled one of these people and this was like way back in 2016 when this when this person said this yeah but she was like everyone's gender is different there are many different genders so i started the hashtag 76 genders when there's really more like infinite genders yeah. you know a lot of people try to tell me that my gender is not real and i think i think that's the most emblematic thing about it is that everybody is looking at this like Dude, this is so crazy like i know people that are like okay you know lgbt that's fine we don't want to make it a whole alphabet mafia we don't want to you know have all these neo pronouns as they call them now i don't i don't really know what's neo about them i call them stupid pronouns <laughs> um but you know digging into all of it you can really see that this is delusion and it we're really letting our next generation down by promoting this and allowing you know our own children to be so confused um and there's this whole d trans movement as well of people that went through this whole community decided to get surgery on the top or bottom of their body and are now looking back on it regretting it they're depressed they feel like they've destroyed themselves and they're so sad about it yeah and it's funny that you know the d trans movement is a, such a big thing but those within the trans community are like oh but it's 0.1 percent to 0.2 percent of the population how come they're allowed to make that argument saying it's 0.1.2 percent but we're not allowed to make the same argument about how many people are actually transgender and are actually within this community and are actually of these neo pronouns there you go hang tight right there we'll be right back Chandler Crump, Kyle Rittenhouse, great guys. Check them out. Support them where you can. Don't forget, sign up, blazetv.com slash Chad. We'll see you tomorrow.